Hey there, Meadowbrook Church. You know, I hope that you're doing well and having a great week. As we have been moving through this forward series, we've been bringing you stories and interviews of how God is working in and through our church and in and through the lives of the people of our church, uh, specifically when it comes to next generation the area of community, and today we're talking about mission, and I'm here with my friend Jake. So Jake, why don't you go ahead and do a quick introduction of, of who you are. Yeah, so my name is Jake Milsna. Uh, my wife Hillary and I have been attending Meadowbrook for almost two years now, mm -hmm. and then we have two kids who you'll see running around often here who are 10 and 8, Elijah and Kate. Mm -hmm. and, and what do you do for your nine to five, if we can call it nine to five job, what is your vocation? Yeah, as close to nine to five as it gets, right? right, right. So uh, my wife and I work with Crew, it's a college ministry. Um, and so we are the team leaders of Milwaukee Metro's version of Crew. So trusting God to reach out to college students um, on the various campuses mm -hmm. and have a community for them to grow in their faith yeah. and get equipped to reach out to those around them. Yeah. Yeah, and I have a, a really strong um, affinity for crew because I was really involved in crew when I was in college and was very instrumental in my own life and my calling and just shaping me to who I am today. Um, so how, how would you describe kind of like the, the daily things you do to reach out to college students? Yeah, so it's pretty varied, but one of our main goals is just to meet as many students as possible. Mm -hmm. And so that will be everything from setting up tables at the beginning of the year and throughout the semester to going out and just randomly talking to students mm -hmm. in campus. But one of our big things is just equipping college students mm -hmm. and what it looks like to share the message of Jesus with their friends, like how to ask good questions, how to meet people, mm -hmm. all those type of things, because their connections are way beyond mine as a 40-year-old guy. Yeah, yeah, nice. So one of the things that I think, if, if I can say this, that brought you to our church was kind of the partnership that started to develop between mm -hmm. Meadowbrook and Crew. And so maybe you could say a little bit more about that how that partnership has played out the last couple years. Yeah, so first we, actually our first time stepping into Meadowbrook was when we were looking at the, the church because of hosting a, a leaders retreat here. Mm -hmm. And that was the first thing. And then in the process, we also hosted a, a worship night, uh, even in the next fall, and even meeting with you to talk through, before we were even uh, members here, talking through could we host our staff getting together twice a week here mm -hmm. as a place for us to just have some community, do prayer, and not have to pay for office space in yeah. Milwaukee, which is expensive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been really neat to see just kind of the, the subtle and simple ways that we can develop this partnership, um, not just with you guys individually, but also with the wider movement. Um, and it's really cool to see all the things that, are, that crew is doing all throughout the metro Milwaukee area. So as we think about, you know, what it means for, right, because not, not only are you engaged in ministry through crew, you're also engaged in ministry here as a mm -hmm. neighborhood community leader, you and your wife hosting a neighborhood community. So as you think of the role that, uh, that mission plays within the life of the church, how do you think through what it means for the church to actually be mobilized to be on mission in their everyday lives? Yeah. So I think that was one of the things that like drew us to Meadowbrook too, beyond you know partnership and any of that, was the vision of getting into the neighborhood mm -hmm. and not everything having to happen inside the walls of the church. Mm -hmm. So I think a healthy church that's on mission is is supporting global missionaries, which we see every Sunday, mm -hmm. um, but is also a part of equipping the the congregation to to reach out to those around them. And so I think of as a church, what does it look like for us to be more confident yep. in talking to our coworkers, our neighbors, yeah. the people who our kids play sports with, yep. all those other things, uh, because so much can happen outside the walls of the church. And so our heart, even being a part of the church, is how do we do that? Mm -hmm. But also, how do we help others do that? Yeah, and and we've talked about one of the simple ways to do that is to be a good neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. to, to live in a way because you you have people living around you all the time, and one of the simple ways to build bridges into people's lives is to be a good neighbor. So, what what would you say about little ways that we could all practice being good neighbors? Yeah, I mean, the first, and it sounds ridiculous, is to meet them. Yeah. I think that's one of the <laughs> hardest things right now is we all feel, like, insanely busy. So, like, meeting yeah. a neighbor mm -hmm. uh, just feels hard. Mm -hmm. um, and we live kind of in our houses, in our backyards. We don't always see people anymore. Right. And so how do you go about, like, 
just saying hi, striking yeah. up conversation. So one is meeting them. Uh, two, I think, is really thinking through just how to get to know them, so yeah. not just getting to know their name, but how do we ask good questions? How yeah. do you get to know the deeper part of who someone is? And so little things like, what kind of questions further that? Yeah. And then I think you can then move into things like hosting your neighbors and mm -hmm. like how, what would it look like to do kind of like a neighborhood gathering? Because yep. people do want to get together. Yeah. Most people just are really bad at initiating. Totally. And so I think as the church, if we can grow as the people who actually initiate events, yep. uh, people will come. Totally. Maybe not to church every Sunday. Maybe they're yep. going to first start coming to your house yep. uh, for a meal. But that makes that invitation to church or like your neighborhood community so much easier in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I, I found um, that like when we host little just front yard gatherings, like, mm -hmm. hey, everybody bring a chair, bring some food, bring something to drink, like people want to connect. Yep. And sometimes they're just waiting for that invitation. So one of the things that we're toying with uh, for this summer is to do, you know, every Friday from like four to six, just an outdoor, like yep. not even having to bring people into our house, but just bring people into our driveway, into our backyard, just to say, hey, come and just hang out for an hour and a half, stop by, just say hi even for 30 minutes. And you, you, you can really make a lot of progress in just making yourself and your space available to people in your neighborhood. Um, so one more question, yep. how would you encourage somebody to kind of get over any sort of fear or hesitation that they might have when it comes to reaching out to a neighbor? Yeah, so I think like one of the fears is we just don't have enough time mm -hmm. and I think that might be the most unspoken one yeah. at this point. And I think part of that is just helping bring them into things you're already doing or things you're already doing. Yeah. So I just think like, yeah, we were gonna hang out as a family in our backyard. Mm. Well, let's try to invite our neighbors in or maybe just even be out there to talk to them as they yep. go by. Yep. Uh, a lot of it is simply uh, sacrificing just a little bit of that comfort mm -hmm. to either invite people in or even say hi as they walk by. Yeah. It's easier sometimes for me just to sit there and read a book <laughs> yeah, yeah. than to like want to engage my neighbors. Yeah. So I think one of the fears is just our time. And I think the other is just how we're going to be received. Yeah. Um, but I do think we live in a time where people are just really hungry for relationships. Yeah. I've seen this time and time again, where whether it's at a sporting event or something else, when I engage with someone, they want to talk. Yeah. Um, and most people do want to gather. They just don't know how. Yeah. Or, they don't want to have to plan it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so those little things that we can offer, uh, I think some of those fears are released when you just say, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm just, it's just something I'm already doing. Right. You don't need to have like great theological answers to invite your neighbor over for dinner. Right. You right. just need to invite your neighbor. Yeah. And you, you see Jesus, right? A lot of times eating with people, spending time with people, just sitting down with them. And it's in those everyday mundane places of life where uh, true transformation, deep conversation, and just meaningful connection can really happen. Yep. So our hope for our church is that as we look to put down roots further in this community to really have a long lasting gospel presence in this community, that we as a church would be moving forward and moving out on mission to reach both our neighbors and this city uh, for the kingdom. And so hopefully this short conversation has been a little bit of an encouragement to you. And we'd love to hear more stories from you on how you find you are reaching out to your neighbors and what's happening. So feel free to drop us a line, put a little message in the comments, and we'd love to hear more from you. So thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you again this Sunday.